basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. NBA, some college, a little bit of everything. You know, what can I say? But it wasn't going to happen here with him. I was okay with it because it wasn't about... It is time for the Bob Ryan, Jeff Goodman to tag along for the ride. Zoom and pod brought to you by Price Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Guys, here we go. 107.89. Celtics beat Dallas in game one. Uh, didn't see it coming. Jeff Goodman, all you. I mean, didn't see it coming, yeah, but but again, and Bob was there. I wasn't in the building, but the crowd seemed pretty amped up. The Celtics have been waiting for this one uh, for a long time. And as I kind of – two things happened to me that stuck out. The two biggest things were obviously for Zingas, sometimes this happens, right? After a long layoff, a guy comes back and he looks like not only has he not missed a beat, but <laughs> – you know, he, he's playing better than he ever has. And I don't think we're going to see that Porzingis again this series. Um, but he was so dominant early to give him that lead, to give him that confidence, to give on both ends of the court, not just offensively where I think he had 18 points in like 12 minutes the first half, but defensively to give him the rim protection and give him the shot blocking and shot altering that you just don't get from Big Al. You just don't. That was number one for me. And number two, that was clear as day watching Dallas, is if Luka and or Kyrie do not have a very good game, if one of them is off, Dallas has zero chance in this series, in, in, in those games. Zero. Derek Lively, I love him to death. But again, he can't do what he did in some of those other series. And same thing for Gafford, catching those lobs, especially with Porzingis on the court. I want to get to. I want to get to where we started, but I, and since you brought up Lively, I've got some data on Gafford and Lively, and and number one, no successful lobs, lobs to either one of them. They 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 shot a hundred percent from the floor as usual together on their dunks and putbacks, but not lobs, and they usually average a couple a game. Um, Lively in the previous series against Minnesota was 16 for 16 on his dunks and lobs and stuff. Uh, and Gafford against Minnesota was 24 for 32. So together they were 40 for 48 in the Minnesota series. Guess what? Dallas? That ain't going to happen anymore. If Porzingis is out there and it Tatum, did last night. Tatum did a great job defensively on them. Also. And, and by the way, one other thing about Tatum, he's thought, he doesn't get enough credit for being a good traffic rebounder. He's Thank become you, an Bob. excellent, Thank you. Become an excellent Thank you. rebounder, getting rebounds that don't necessarily belong to him. That's, Thank that's you. the mark of a great rebound. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But uh, just so right, uh, Jeff, about the, the two of those guys. I said, if they are good enough to carry them past a vastly superior TEAM, more power to them, fine. I'll live with that. I don't want to get beat by, by P.J. Washington or, or by the Lively and, and Gafford duo, or by Hardy or or anybody else, uh, Derek Nelson. I I don't uh, I don't mind. I don't I I could live theoretically losing to those guys. Not that they're going to lose. They're going to win this series. But um, the, the Porzingis is self evident. The play that will stick in my mind, the Bill Russell play where he blocked the shot, retained the ball, yeah. and started the fast break. That was the thing that separated Russell from most all shot blockers of his time. Was he didn't seek to knock it out of bounds and show up and give him another possession. He and Heinsohn used to tell me he called it. He used to pop it, not block it. He could direct it, and and this is what, either intentionally or you know, it worked out that way. This is what he did on that one play when he blocked the jump shot of Irving and retained the ball and started the break. Uh, the defense, I think, guys, is going to be there. There's no reason the defense won't be there every night. He may not make the shots that he made last night every night. Okay, I was astonished at how well he shot. But but the other stuff, why won't that be there? So he, they, and they, and against this particular team, to take away their secondary source of offense, you know, the primary source, of course, are these two stars. They, they got no other consistent source of offense other than what they were giving them with those lobs. If you take that away, they're screwed. Yeah. We saw last night what – Brad Stevens had envisioned when he put this team together. We saw it. 
And we, if you take a look at the line, and there, there were some Nate, Tatum. I talked to some of my friends last night, and they were talking about Tatum being off. I go, Tatum being off. I go, no, he's no, no, he's doing what we wanted him to do. <laughs> you, I mean, twenty-two points for Brown, sixteen points, eleven rebounds. Jeff pointed out five assists for Tatum. Um, White had fifteen points. Horford had ten points. Holiday had twelve points. Uh, Porzingis had his twenty. This is what we want. It was it was great. And Five, Tatum, 30. when it when it got down to a little bit of an anxiety moment at eight, and I was I was worried. Sure, you've seen it. Tatum and Brown put on the they went into the phone booth yeah. as we used to say, and they and they came out and they did what they were supposed to. Pay they went to the hoop, and they got the lead back up with a fourteen zero run. Right. And it was those those two that were primarily responsible, and Tatum stepped up. Uh, that was I'm, I'm I'm glad that happened. I wasn't very happy at the moment seeing it at eight, but I'm glad that happened to see how they would react to that. And they reacted exactly the way they should have done. And they did exactly what you would want them to do at that moment and got it back up to 22. And, you know, we knew at the end it would be Geno time. So um, absolutely, uh, he's, he's he's unfairly criticized. He's, he's, the burden's on him. You know, he's penalized by the history of the Celtics and who's come before him and what people expect out of the supposed best player in the team. And and uh, I just hope he can deal with all this, you know, and understand it's not fair, but I got to live with it. Well, but Jeff, no, if you understand basketball at all, you understand that Tatum played a great game last night. And I think everybody did. I mean, it was like everybody played a great game. We'll get to Brown in a minute because Brown has been super too. I mean, don't get me wrong, but like like some people say, oh, Tatum only – I go, you're out of your mind. You didn't watch the game. You didn't you see what he was trying to do. He had the best plus minus. I think it was Holiday. He did. Well, no, actually, uh, hang on. I think uh, Tatum had like a 26 plus minus. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, plus minus. Uh, well, Tatum had a 19 plus minus. Holiday had a 20. Had a 20. But, I mean, he had a 19 plus minus. I mean, like, if you understand the game, you see that Jason Tatum just put his ego aside and say, I'm going to do what's best for the team. And, again, they're doubling him. Every yes. time, every chance they get, and right. and what he, the only thing I'd like to see him do a little bit less. Sometimes he leaves his feet too much, without knowing where he's going with the pass, and and he'll have some careless turnovers. Okay, but again, he that's said that in the post game. He said that in the post game. I had too many turnovers. Oh, yeah, when they kind of nitpicking because again, he's just he lets the game come to him, and instead of hearing all the critics, right, which he hears them, you know, he hears them, and instead of saying, you know what. Jalen Brown won Eastern Conference Finals MVP. I'm going to win. I'm going to win NBA Finals MVP here. I'm taking this one on my back, and I'm going to score 30 or 40 tonight. What did he do? Like, literally, he didn't force a shot in the first quarter. All he did was move the basketball, and especially when Porzingis got hot, beat him. Keep yeah. giving him the ball. That's maturity. That is maturity for Jason Tatum. It's something that he could not have done and did not do three, four years ago, right. and now understanding the bigger picture, which is, you know what? Like, I got a pretty damn good team around me, number one. And number two, like, if we don't win this thing, like, I'm going to get crucified. We got to win this. That's the most important thing than me getting 30. Agreed. Now, the most significant number that came out of this game, I'm not being facetious or hyperbolic, I mean it, was one. And that was the number of assists that Doncic had. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, oh, it's right, not just the points right. he scores; it's the production, it's the twenty-seven, it's the thirty-point, ten assist games that 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 he he lives off, and he had one assist. I looked it up, guys. That was the lowest. Well, it's we knew we, they told us it was the lowest of the season. It was. I, I looked it up. On November fourteenth, he had two assists in a loss against the uh, Jazz. Excuse me, the Hornets, one thirty-one, one ten. On February fifth, he had three assists in a win over Philadelphia, and on March twelfth. He had three assists in a two-point win over Denver. That that's those are the previous lows for his season, and and uh, he had one assist. Now it, it, we, you're not going to hold him to one every night, but that is that is just if you, if you say you know the game, you follow the game. That is an astonishing number based on who this guy is, really. That well, so well, for whatever said, reason, though, part of it is the lack of lobs, right? You're not he, yeah, he wasn't yeah. throwing those. Usually he gets yeah. probably two, two or three. three. Anyway. Two or three to Lively and Gafford that way. And and if he's not doing that, he's not getting those other guys involved as much, right? That the Derek right. Joneses aren't making shots and they need Derek Jones to give them something. PJ Washington 
what do you have, 12 points? They need more than that on a night when Kyrie couldn't make shots. You know, he made a couple right. of tough shots, contested shots. But for the most part, Kyrie was way off. So you have to get P.J. Washington involved. You have to get Lively going a little bit. And, and that's where it was all on Luka to score last night. And, man, he is – how much fun is he to watch, Bob, though? He, he's a, he's incredible. I mean, incredible, it just, I incredible. keep saying he can go wherever he wants to go at his pace. Yeah. And, and it does, he, you can't stop him from getting to the basket. He just gets there. Um, and then if, if he then he's got to step back and from a ridiculous distance if he needs it. It's it's Novisky distance, you know, if the, on the step back. Um, no, he's he's oh, I totally enjoy watching him play. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than five million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up a hundred times your cash. With Prize Picks, you could turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a Prize Picks lineup in as little as sixty seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. Now, if you're looking for promotions, Prize Picks has got you covered every week from lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays which increases your chance of getting a win to getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. The finals mean more on prize picks, and so do the star players. You get boosted playoffs on selected basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. Now, this week on prize picks, I'm looking at Jason Tatum, more than 26 and a half points, Jalen Brown, more than three threes, which may be aggressive, but I'm running with that. Download that app today and use a code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And what was the reception for Kyrie like? Tell me what what, what it was like yeah, in the was building. It was every did time he same, did. Did you have the same animosity watching Kyrie last night that you had, you know, four or five years ago? No, because I've been trying to study what's been coming out of him. Uh, at, and I really think... He's getting, getting, remember what I used to say, he's searching for something in life, but doesn't know what it is. I think here in this place, in this context with, with this particular teammate and this particular coach, apparently, and, 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 and the Indeks environment, he's kind of almost found it. And he's not the same person. I don't think specifically. Uh, and, and, and you know what? I don't have, I'm not harboring your will. I think he was a complicated person. And, and, and if that was the case, I, I think he always meant well in his own mind. He's he is personally very philanthropic. Let's get that straight, folks. He's very personally philanthropic. So there's a good person in there to it. We just never saw enough of it. And uh, so, no, I didn't No, The answer to your question, they booed him every time he touched the ball. It was perfunctory, knee-jerk stuff, egged on by the media, national media that was predicting this. People didn't want to disappoint the national media, I don't think. Right. And then there was the Kyrie sucks, which I hate. You know, we don't need that. And and but that was there. But uh, it was yeah, you know, it was pretty much what you expect. I also thought it was interesting. Um, Jalen Brown had a big block on Kyrie, right? Yes. So I was listening. You know, I I was listening to our old friends there with Felger and Maz, and uh, Jalen complimented Kyrie. Said he's one of my friends, so forth and so on. And of course, they were talking about I hate that. You know, why can't we? Why do they have to be friends? And, that wasn't an issue on the court. <laughs> no. you know? And that is today's NBA. Jeff can talk to that. That is today's yeah. NBA. The players are friends, but, and that's just the way it is. You know, the Bob Gibson days are ancient history. Uh, the Larry Bird days, if you will, are history. That's just the way it is. I didn't see any problem last night, Jeff. No, no. And Jalen Brown, we haven't even got to him yet. But man, No, we got to get to him because he, nope. I mean, that's the another. Defense. The defense no, is back. No. That's the key with Jalen Brown to me. Obviously, the the handle's much better. And I think the handle now, like I think last year in the postseason, obviously his handle's not great, but then it gets into your head as well. Right. So I think it became a mental thing for him as much as anything as the playoffs kind of went on last year. Now, I think it's the other way. He's got that confidence coming in, coming off this this performance in the last series, and uh, and, and that kind of, I'm going to go to the basket because – I, w I was worried. I was worried Derek Jones, he hasn't seen anybody like Derek Jones defensively. Now, they started Derek Jones on Tatum. 
So that that is obviously – their game plan was, hey, try to cut Tatum off here because Derek Jones is an elite defender. He's an elite defender. I wonder if that will change it all for, for game two and they'll move him to, mm-hmm. to Jalen Brown a little bit more. I don't know. But Jalen Brown's defense, especially in that third quarter, in that stretch, was remarkable. And that's the way, to me – he played earlier in his career defensively. He was that. And then he yeah. went into a, kind of a rut for a few years where you just yeah. didn't see that Jalen Brown defensively. I don't know where he went. So all in all, it was a very in- encouraging performance to answer questions we had. The layoff, obviously, was was I- I- irrelevant. The Brazingis, we can't say enough about what an extraordinary performance that was in the context and, and not to expect something like that every night at the offensive end, but there's no reason why they won't get the, the defensive uh, necessary defense out of him. And um, it was all, and I, the fact that they answered the, you know, the, uh, when they got down to eight, that they did the right stuff and, 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 right. and they he, took over. He, so that was good. Bob, which brings me to this point that, because I was actually texting with my old colleague, Trenny last night. Ah. And we were talking, I was texting with Trenny and a bunch of people. And I said, and she says, boy, after leaving the business, you've mellowed. I go, I have. Yes, I, I I have. I have mellowed. I'm a little happier. I'm not always thinking about what I have to say to make people angry every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think what we need to accept with this team is that the, the, success, the success of the club depends on both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. We have, because of the star power of the NBA, and the first names, LeBron, Magic, Larry, Michael. We have Jack, this idea. Kobe. What's it? Who? Jack, uh, Kobe. Yeah, Shaq, Kobe. We have first this name idea, League. Right, first name League. We have this idea in our heads that it's got to be one guy. Well, I think Jason Tatum is a wonderful player, and I think he's a wonderful person, and he's a good dad, and he's he seems – there's nothing to dislike about the guy. I, I've but, told you that. I've told you that I for mean, years. Not, you've told me that for years. He's so, awesome. But, Tatum, but Tatum and Brown yeah. need each other. And I yes. think that's okay. I mean, they just do. I mean, and that's fine because I don't think Tatum is Kobe. I don't think Brown is Kobe. I don't think Tatum is Magic. Or I don't think any – I don't think these two players are those guys. They're just a, they're just a, they're just a little bit below. But put them together and surround them? Forget about it. I mean, oh, I that's it what, is what it is, right? Like, that's what we like, have to accept. Like it's Jason okay. Tatum, Jason Tatum, probably Luke is a better play. There are, there are three or four probably players that are better than Jason Tatum. He's somewhere in that, you know, four to seven range, probably in the, in the league right now. Jalen Brown is probably somewhere in the 15 to 20 range, or maybe you go 10 to 20 range in the NBA right now. But yes, you put them together, and I hate I hate it when people are like, "Oh, they're so similar." Like they're not. There's nothing no. similar about them. There's no. zero, zero. No. What? They're both like what? I, I don't even know what it they is. They both shoot threes. I mean, that's it. What that's is it? it? There's nothing similar. Nothing. Jason Tatum is more versatile. Uh, he he passes it better. He makes people better. He's he's more chill than Jalen. Jalen is elite, elite in the open court. Um, neither one is an elite shooter from three, but both can get going. Um, they're both capable, like Jalen could be an elite defender. Jason Tatum could be a very good defender. Like they're just not, they're not even close to similar. So I'm, I'm so sick and effing tired of that because like you said, Gary, what makes them great together is they're not similar, right? Their, their <laughs> strengths and weaknesses play well off one another. Yeah, that's good. I, I agree with that. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip-off. Like right now, I was looking on the app, and it's really easy to use. Just download the app. Lots of pictures for sports fans. Lots of pictures. And, you know, the tickets for Celtics Game 1 and whoever they play, between six, seven hundred bucks. But the closer you get to actual tip time, it's going to go down. So you and your friends may do a last minute thing. And I know it's a lot of money, but maybe it's two, three of your friends. Last minute trip. Boom. Let's go. Let's see what the tickets are on game time. You never know. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. 
last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Okay, here's the deal. Last minute deals, save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, etc. Now the flash deal is save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Save even more when you choose a section for the zone deals. You choose a section, let game time choose the seats. Sounds pretty good to me. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I agree with that. That guy, by the way, guys, if they win game two, uh, history tells us they have only lost one series ever up 2 0. Yeah, when's that? Cleveland in 18. Oh, that's right. That's right. And that's yeah. it. They uh, so you know, winning game two is 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 generally speaking, it get, gets you, you know, well, it'll be a different game. I mean, we way, know yeah. it's gonna well, be a different, yeah. it be it a different game, but but then again, they, the Celtics, uh, you know, Pritchard's not going to go for six or whatever the hell he was either next game, by the way. So, yeah. you know, the, the, he'll, he'll be heard from it'll be somebody know. else. And the reality is, as we have seen in history, tells us. All of these games are individuals. There's no, yeah, no question. I mean, and just to remind people that need to be reminded, and you know, well, we're happy to have people that were, were not remotely born <laughs> when these things happen that are that are part of our audience. But you know, those of us who were around will always remember 1985. There's no way of getting around it. The Mundo hey, Miller, Mexico, 148 to 114. Scott Webbin went 11 for 11. Oh, by the way, they were up by 25 when he entered the game, but that's okay. He went 11 for 11, and and uh, three nights later, they lost, and they went up losing in six games to the Lakers. Now, that was a Laker team with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's a whole other dynamic about how Kareem brooded in the hotel room for three days, and he came out with fire and had the most rebounds he had in 10 years in game two. How about that? So, yeah, he had 17 rebounds. Hadn't done that in 10 years. And uh, Kyrie, anyway, Kyrie, so- better, Kyrie better uh, uh, do whatever Kareem did. He might want yeah. to call Kareem and find out what Kareem did. Yeah, in those days in between because Kyrie so, need to come oh, out and probably go for 25 or 30 and make it efficient. I would tell you what a really very touching part of the evening was, guys. Oh. The heroes among us was Zdeno Chara at really? the second period. And for his myriad of, of, of civic uh, contributions that he's made and is making right now. Uh, you know, the, mar- the marathons he runs are for charity. He didn't do that just to show off. Really? And he, uh, but he does other stuff. And, you know, I've been, uh, uh, ever since they in- instituted this second period policy, you know, I've been to many, many, many of them. And people always stand up and give a, a, a perfunctory applause because somebody saved kid from, you know, from a fire yeah. and somebody's yeah. done this and, and all wonderful people. But this really? reaction was by crazy. far the greatest reaction that yeah. uh, I've seen at the Heroes Among Us in any yeah. night I've ever been to the garden since they did it for Chara, uh, you know, that which was kind of, it, it was really sweet. And, and you know, he couldn't, I think he was blown away. I really don't think he ever imagined that the basketball crowd would treat him in that manner the way they did. Of course, he's standing there with a, an 18 jersey on. He is six feet nine. He looked very appropriate in that jersey, you know. But I thought that was shot. a really, really nice touch. And whoever came up with that one, that was pretty good. It was also good they had the Walton shirts. Yep. The Walton shirts, which I didn't know about until today, because when I sit up in the boonies, you know, in the, yep. in, the, in, the in the rafters, uh, you, you had no idea. But I saw them finally this morning. That was a nice touch. Nice tribute to Bill, video tribute to Bill. And uh, yeah, that it, it was very well. It was very nice. It was a, it was you know, it was a great night to be a Celtic fan. It was a great night all around. Before we go, guys, I just have a, I have a couple, of, two things I want to touch on real quick here. Um, I want to talk about Holiday, and I want to talk. White was great too. I mean, I, I don't. He he made. I want to talk about Holiday for a minute, and then I want to talk about Missoula. But the thing I, I loved about Holiday last night, again, giving the game what it needed, that up and under layup. Mm-hmm that he made yep. was a brilliant play. I mean, I forgot who the defender was. Who the, I don't even, and that the guy had no chance. I I've mean, seen it before. He is really, 
I, he, that, that's at least the second, if not the third time he's done it in the playoffs. It's part of his repertoire. Uh, he's, he's just, he, he's just a clinic. He is. And, and I mean, guys, too, we're so lucky. The backcourt is, I got, I'm telling you, it's got to be the envy of every coach in the league to have not, two of them. As I said, it's almost not fair. You know, one per customer would be fair, but to have two of them. No, you're right. Kyle and Holiday. Um, I was texting with a certain former coach of the Celtics who now coaches another team in the East. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I said something about, how about that Porzingis, huh? And he comes back and says, and Holiday. That was his immediate response. Yeah. That coach who used to coach you and now coaches another team in the East. That's what he had to say. And Holiday. So he, he – they're That's all, I mean, again, they, they're they all pro. Together. I mean, this is they Brad Stevens. Together. That's tremendous. The key. Like, uh, that, at absolutely. the start of this, Gary. Like, I, I, we got a very quick getaway. I got to get to Jeff because this is fascinating. Jeff, Go ahead. one name at you, yeah. your reaction. Yeah. Chase Buttinger. No, I thought you were going to throw the one name you, 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 I know, to I know you're expecting okay. a name okay. of a certain coach. In, in all right. All right. I, we'll, we'll do that next after. week. When he takes the job, we'll do it. All right. Uh, we should do it for a couple minutes now. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Chase Buttinger. So I knew this. Obviously, I went to school at Arizona. So yes. I knew what a great beach volleyball player he was mm -hmm. when he went to school at Arizona. I saw him play in AU basketball. He played on a – I think he played on a team with Kevin Love, uh, uh -huh. Daniel Hackett. Like, he played uh, – Brandon Jennings. There is a big deal. I know. One of the best I've ever seen, the Southern Cal All-Stars. And uh, you heard these stories – about how great Buttinger was, better in volleyball than he was in basketball. Well, he plays eight years in the NBA. I think he went overseas for maybe a year. And then you, I kind of heard about it. Like, he's going to give it a try again on the beach volleyball tour. And then there you have it. The he makes other the day. team. He's 36. Yeah. I 36. love it. I love multi-sport. I love it. I, this is a great story. Really it's cool. Okay. And yeah. I know, hey, we got a, a fellow alum to, to, to you know, give us the inside story here. This is great. Okay, Danny. Yeah, what, what's your take? So Dan Hurley, this was the big thing, Gary, that, you know, obviously has, has uh, consumed me for the last 24 or 48 hours, whatever it's been, 36 hours now, is Dan Hurley uh, meeting with the Lakers uh, today. And uh, it kind of came out of nowhere a little bit. Because, again, Shams had reported that it was going to be J.J. Redick. Everybody kind of just assumed that was the case. I've seen and talked to Danny multiple times in the last couple of weeks I don't think he got serious until the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I think, yeah, there were some some conversations between Rob Polenka and Brett Just, uh, Dan Hurley's agent, but I don't think it ever went very far. And 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 then it started to, okay, you're our guy. You're the guy we want. And oh, by the way, we're going to pay you such and such. And Danny Hurley's not, the money isn't going to be obviously the, the, the deciding factor here. But when you're talking about potentially – making 75 million let's say on a six-year deal with the lakers somewhere in that vicinity i think it's going to be about 12 million a year uh or eight million a year for six years with the with the yukon i mean that's 25 million that that's that's a pretty significant difference here so i i think ultimately for dan hurley though it's going to be do i want the challenge you know i i've been in my brother's shadow and even my dad's shadow for the better part of my life Right. I, I was a decent player, but not a great player at Seton Hall. My brother was the All-American. My dad was the All-American high school coach, the Hall of Fame coach. He's the Hall of Famer. I was there. Finally, it's been about Dan Hurley the last couple of years. Absolutely. And you wonder if it's just like, hey, you know what? Like, I, I think he should take a shot at it. I do. I don't want to, I don't want to lose him in college, but I think he should he should take a shot because One quick at question. Worst, worst case uh, scenario, Bob, you go back in a couple of years. If it doesn't work out, you're gonna get the best college oh. job. In a couple of years. Absolutely. Uh, that, that's the thing. He's 51. He'll be employable for 20 more years. Right. Okay. They're I mean, automatically, people are saying UConn a, a, is a, another top five team coming back. They got two trans – tell me if, what you know about Taris Reed Jr. of Michigan and Aiden Mahaney of St. Mary's and their number one five-star recruit, Liam McNeely. Are they are – they, so I've seen them all. Yeah, I've seen them all. Liam McNeely was, was scheduled to go to Indiana. Liam just okay. knows how to play. Good size, moves the ball, can shoot the hell out of it. Aiden Mahaney came from St. Mary's. Didn't have a great year this past year. One of the better guards in the portal, can really score, uh, shoots it well, can play the point. Terrace Reed played at Michigan, big kid, gives him that defensive presence. The big one was they got Alex Caravan. South I know. Uh, he comes they, back. Absolutely. Yeah, they got him back last week. 
Yes, so I know. They have a top three team. They are capable, fully capable of going back to back to back and three-peating for the first time since Bill Walton's UCLA teams in the 70s. In the no, early. they didn't make three. They got beat the third year. You got to go back to you got to go back to, to the uh, UCLA. Wooden. The Wooden right. team, I'm sorry. Wooden team because they got beat by New Carolina State. That was the thing right. in, in so, the semifinals in 74. So. Oh, yeah. Nobody. Oh, they're the only UCLA in the. That year was the only team that ever did it, but it wasn't Walton. You know, uh, I think Cinder did it. So does Cinder. he do it? I've been told this could go either way. This really could go either way. The bigger question here I've had, and, and whenever, and I've been, I've talked to Dan about it, even the NBA a little bit in the past, and, and NBA guys have asked me about him. And I just looked at it like, I don't think he can do it because his ego and the way he acts on the sidelines, he can act like a complete child at times and, the way he goes at refs, like he, I just don't know if he works. Now again, X's and O's, he works. He's terrific. He would have I, to change. My sense is he will reinvent himself if he has to, easily. Yeah. No, not now, easily, but he'll. I mean, yeah. Oh no, you can't act the way he acts right. in the NBA. You can't. Who this has? Give me. Is there ever been a coach ever, 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 Bob, who's acted like Dan Hurley on the sidelines? Not in my fifty-five years. No. <laughs> There might have been somebody before that. No, I mean, no. You, you Who's just the don't closest have that. thing? Who's the closest thing? The most flammable guy that would go after refs and rile up the crowd. Tommy. Some of the stuff Dan Tommy? Does is, who? Tommy. You know who riled up the crowd, but he wasn't necessarily. He used to orchestrate. It was Vital when he was with the Pistons. Yeah. Well, but there uh, you go. Uh, but I mean, Heinsohn, You know, Heinsohn used to. I, I, I. That's the only guy I got. No, this. I. I I'm, I'll tell you what, uh, Jeff, I'll think about that and see if I can have an answer yeah. for you when we reconvene, because I don't have one off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, and as we're recording this, you know, we're recording this uh, Friday, you know, about noon, Dan Hurley is meeting with, with the Lakers brass right now, Jeannie right. Buss uh, and Rob Palenka. You know, obviously it would be interesting to see LeBron had tweeted about him, you know, when they won yeah. their, their title about – how impressed he was with their offense, all that. I, I'll say this too, guys. Dan Hurley, off, out of the lines, is one of the most charismatic people you're going to meet. You know, he, he really is. Yeah. He really is. I mean, that, you know, when I, I saw, an, I can't remember who ran the piece. Was it CBS or ESPN? And the reason I think, you know, you know better than me, Jeff, but as an outsider looking in, the reason I think it'll work is because I saw how he went through an emotional situation when he was in high school or college. He thought he wasn't going to play oh, basketball no. again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had he had a tough time mentally. And look, mental health is a pandemic in this country. It just is. We all need to be aware. We have stepped up as a society, I think, in in in, in addressing this. And I think he's well aware of that. And if you're of that mindset, when you go into the NBA, you understand – that you're dealing with the plus best players in the world. And and I think he's a great X's and O's coach, but I think that his players will jump in front of a truck for him. And oh, they, will. I, they will. They will. Yes, and he, I think he can get an I think he can get an NBA guy to do that. Not the same way, but I think he can get like it's he, he's not gonna get on the rass every night, but I think he can get the NBA guy to do that. No, no, he, he's very positive with his players. Like right. he will kill refs. But well, he is very, yeah. very positive with his players. And the other thing that will separate Dan Hurley from 90% of the NBA coaches is he will outwork all of them. Right. All of them. All of them. Relentless, relentless. I mean, he'll say it like, you know, he's about as screwed up. Of an, and he'll say, like, I'm a Hurley. Like, I'm a Hurley. Andrea <laughs> Hurley, the greatest line came from his wife, Andrea, who would always tell me, like, like, if if we if we lost if we lose, Danny's miserable. If we win, Danny's miserable. Yeah, <laughs> like that's just who, how he was. He he's just wired differently. And I think again, I think yes, he's got to change and adapt and do it quickly. My bigger problem is like, can you really win with a forty year old LeBron and uh, and yeah. still a brittle it, Anthony? It, it's Davis? about like, per it's about personnel. He needs players. Right. It's about yes. personnel. Yes. That's a whole yeah. other topic at the construction of that roster. And then if and when it happens, we can get into that. Yeah, we can get to it then. But that's but that's the bigger issue. But hey, you know, when it comes to listen, UConn on the doorstep of winning another one, but the way that the 
payers are getting played now in college and everything is changing in college. It's coaches don't have as much no, control as they once did. I mean, God, what's the difference, right? I mean, who knows? Guys, we got to go. Yeah. Uh, Bob, thank you very much. Jeff Goodman, Bye. always a pleasure. Uh, brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media. Pick more, pick less. It is always that easy with Prize Picks.